Hey guys and welcome back. We're going to go ahead and cover a few more questions off of the arithmetic reasoning portion of the ASVAB. So let's go ahead and dive right in and let's see what we can learn. Got some choices to make here for 21. It says a hey, tiling costs 289 per square foot. What is the cost to tile a kitchen whose dimensions are four yards by five yards? Big thing to keep in mind here is we have yards here and we have feet here. So we have to convert here. So big thing to know is that there are three feet in one yard all right so when we're doing this one of two ways we could do this one would be 289 well it's square foot so you would have to do that into a square yard so instead of multiplying that by three which a lot of people would do you actually would need to multiply that by nine because that's the square of three so we could either multiply this by nine and then take that answer and multiply it by the four times five, which is gonna be the dimension of that kitchen. So that would be multiplying it by 20. The other option would do four times three and five times three, which is gonna give us 12 times 15, and then find that area and multiply it by the 289. I'm gonna go ahead and do it the first way, but both of those would work. Let's go ahead and walk through this. So first off, let's just make this into square yards instead. So how much would this be per square yard? Well, we would just need to multiply this by nine, because again, we have to square that three for the conversion. So what is 289 times nine? Well, nine times nine is 81, carry the eight. 9 times 8 is 72, plus that 8 would give us 80. And 9 times 2 is going to give us 18, plus that 8 is going to give us, what, 26? And two decimal places, so put that there. So that means that it's going to be 2601 per square foot, or sorry, square yard, because we now have converted. So now we need to multiply that by the dimensions of this. Well, 4 by 5, a 4 by 5 kitchen. To find that area, you just multiply, so 4 times 5 is 20. So we have to multiply this by 20, because we have 20 square yards. It's 2601 per square yard, so multiply this by 20. That's actually easy, because that means we're just essentially doubling it and putting a zero on the end. So if I look at these answers, doubling this would be, what, five, 52? Yeah, 52. And then we have the doubling it would make it 0.02. Um, and then we have to add that zero on the end. So that's actually going to move this guy over one. So we actually going to end up with 520 and 20 cents, which is answer D. Everyone's least favorite subject, fractions. It says one eighth of a bookstore's magazines are sold on Friday. If one fourth of the remaining magazines are sold the next day, what fraction part, fractional part of the magazines remains at the end of the second day? So we're looking here at a... Total one, all right, but they lose one eighth right off the bat. Well, losing one eighth means that we have seven eighths left at the end of that day. Now, it says the next day, one fourth of the remaining. So that means one fourth of this guy is sold. So you have seven eighths left. How do you find one fourth of that? Well, technically, you would be just dividing that by four. But if you're dividing by four, really you can just multiply that onto the bottom saying that, hey, they're going to end up removing seven over 32 on the second day. So now we have one eighth being removed the first day. We have seven over 32 being removed the second day. So how much is left? Well, remember at the beginning of the second day, we only have seven eighths left. So we have to subtract that seven over 32 from that guy. Well, eight times four gives me 32. 7 times 4 gives me 28. So if I unreduce this guy, bring it up to a least common denominator, then that means that we're going to end up having 32 on the bottom by multiplying these two and 28 on the top. Now we can subtract across the top. 28 minus 7 is going to give me 21 out of 32. Two. That's how much we have left because we lost that one eighth off the bat and then we lost seven over 32 after this math from the second day. So our final answer here should we we have 21 over 32 remaining of the magazines. So our final answer D. Roxanne. Deposited $300 into a savings account, earning 5 and a fourth percent annually. What is her balance after one year? So here's the deal. We're taking this $300, and we're adding whatever 5 and a fourth percent of that guy is to it. 
all right? And then finding out how much that is going to be for the new total. So how do we find five and a fourth percent of 300? Well, let's start off. Let me just throw something out there. One percent would just be moving the decimal over twice, all right? Because it's essentially doing 0.01, so multiplying by 0.01, so you'd move it over. If we wanted to, we could say this is one-fourth is 0.25, so we would say move the decimal place over twice. This would be 0 0.0525. We could multiply this by the full 300 without a calculator, get our answer, and go from there. I'm going to instead do it doing this way, all right? 1% moving it over twice is going to be 3. So if I have 5%, that would be 3 times 5, so that would be $15. We also have that 1 fourth. Well, 1 fourth would be 3, because remember this is the 1%, would be 3 over 4, which is the same thing as 0.75. So 1 fourth which would be, you know, one-fourth of that three, is 75 cents. So we have $15, we have 75 cents. We're adding that to the 300, which is going to give me 315.75. So our answer here is D. Number 24 says, one phone plan charges a $20 monthly fee and $0.08 cents per minute on every phone call made. Another phone plan charges $12 monthly fee and $0.12 cents per minute for each call. How many minutes would the charges be the same for both? All right, so here's the deal. We got to set two equations equal to each other. The first one charges you $20 straight up plus... 0.08 times the number of minutes. The second one is going to be $12 plus 12 cents per minute. And we want to know when the two of these are equal. So that means we're just solving for M here. So the first thing I want to do is get M by itself by subtracting 12 from both sides. That means that I'm going to do 20 minus 12 to cancel out over here. So 20 minus 12 is going to end up giving me 8 plus... And I still have this 0.08m is equal to 0.12m. And then I'm going to go ahead and subtract, or well, yeah, subtract the 0.08m from each side. Now, what this is going to do is cancel these out over here and leave me with 8 is equal to, well, 12 minus 8 is going to give me 0.04m. And now I need to divide both sides by this 0.04 to get m by itself because they're multiplying right now. So 8 divided by 4 is 2. And then you got to move the decimal over twice, which would give you 200. So that means that, and they cancel it over here, so that means that after 200 minutes, these two plans would be equal. So answer is D. Number 25, let's take a look. It says the length of a rectangle is three times its width. So if we're looking here, this guy is x, and this is three times whatever that x is. It says if the perimeter of the rectangle is 48, what is its area? So we have to solve for x and then do length times width to get the area. So how do we do this? Well, perimeter is when you add up all the sides. Well, if I add these all up, I have an x here, x here, three x's, three x's. So that's 6x, 7x, 8x total. So I have 8x's, and that is equal to 48. Well, if I go ahead and divide both of these by 8, we get that x is equal to 6. Now, if x is equal to 6, now I can find this area, because that means I'm looking at 6. And then we have 3 times 6, which would be 18. So really, we're looking at 3 times 6 times 6. Um, what would that end up giving me? Well, that would be essentially 6 times 6 is 36 times 3. That's going to be a total of 108. So it looks like our final answer here is A. This is one of those questions you can probably knock out in a few seconds. It says, number 26, a machine can produce 8,000 widgets in three hours. How many widgets are produced in a one day? So in one day is 24 hours, right? Well, we know in three hours, they can do 8,000 widgets. So that means how many three-hour periods are there in 24? Well, what's 24 divided by 3? 8. So that means we have 8 of these periods going on. So all I really need to do here is 8 times that 8,000 widgets, and it will give me my final answer. So remember, 8 times 8 is going to give me 64. And then I still need to bring down those three zeros. And that means that we're going to end up 
with a total of 64,000 widgets in that one day period. So looking through my answers here, it looks like that's going to be answer B, 64,000. Fantastic. Let's try a little bit of adding by rounding here. It says number 27, Sam buys three candy bars for 45 cents each and two packs of gum for 79 cents each. What's the total cost of this purchase? First off, let's deal with the three candy bars for 45 cents each. I know that's very similar to 50 cents each with an extra five taken off each there. So if I did 50 plus 50 plus 50, that's an easy 150 from me. And because I did three five cents off, I would take 15 off of that, knowing that that would be $1.35. Now for this guy right here, two packs of gun at 79, let's pretend that that is 80 and 80. That would be 160 when I add those together easily. Minus two from the one I added both times would end up giving me 158. Now, if we end up adding those two together, eight and the five is going to end up giving me 13. Carry the one. Five and three is going to give me eight, plus that one is nine, and then one plus one is two. So we're looking at 293, which is answer B. You can do this a lot of different ways, but that's just one way of like doing a little rounding there to add them up. This one may take a little bit longer than you thought. Number 28 says Devin throws a football seven and a third yards. Carl throws it two and a half times farther. How much farther did Carl's throw travel than Devin's? So right off the bat, you're like, okay, well, two and a half times more than that. Well, two times seven is 14, so we're already looking at a number higher than 14, so obviously 18. But be careful, it says how much farther. So we actually do need to do this math out, meaning I have to multiply this guy and then subtract this from that answer once they go. So here's how we're going to do this. We're going to do... Um, turn these into improper fractions first. You do that by taking the number times the number on the bottom and adding it to the top to give you the improper fraction of this mixed number. 7 times 3 is 21, plus 1 is 22 over 3. And this guy that we're multiplying by is 2 times 2, which is 4, plus 1 is 5 over 2. So we're going to go ahead and multiply straight across. 22 times 5 is going to give me 110 over 3 times 2 is 6. So now what the heck is this number? Well, I know that 6 times 18 is 108, so that would be 18 with 2 left over, because 110 minus 108, with a remainder of 2 over 6, which is the same as 18 and 1 third. Now I need to subtract off that original, because this is how far now that Carl threw it, so how much further will minus that 7 and 1 third. Well, the 1 thirds will cancel out. 18 minus 7 is going to give me 11 for a final answer. Of C. They are really trying to end this test on an easy note. Let's see here. 29. This morning, Taryn drove 13 miles to the library and then returned home. In the afternoon, she drove 9 miles to the movies and returned home. How much farther did Taryn travel in the morning? Well, in the morning, Taryn drove 13 miles and then also had to drive home, which would have been another 13 miles back. So you're looking at a total, adding those two together, of 26. Then, in the afternoon, she drove nine miles to the movies and then returned home for another nine miles. So this would be a total of 18. So if I want to know how much further in the morning she drove, well, that would be 26 minus that 18. Now, doing this in your head, probably easy enough. 26 minus 18 is just going to give me eight. If you're the type of person you're like, I can't do that quickly in my head, think of it this way. You're doing 26, while well, minus 10 would bring you to 16, so this is 2 less than that 16, which brings me to 8. Maybe that's just a mental thing that would be helpful for you. I don't know. But either way, our answer here is C. Number 30, let's end this test. It says, Heidi tell you the different car colors in the parking lot and summarize her results in the pie chart. There are 260 cars in the lot. How many cars are either red or black? Well, first off, what is the total percent of being red or black? Now, or means you add those two percents together. So we're going to go ahead and do 30 plus that 25. So that means we're looking for 55% of that 260. Now, 
There's lots of different ways we could do this. We could just do 0.55, which is the decimal form of that by moving the decimal place over twice, and multiply that by 260, and that would give us the answer. Or we can do some creative like um, rounding or grouping or whatever here to get the answer. So in this case, I'm going to look at 50% of 260, and that means I'm going to have 5% left. And here's how I'm going to handle these. 50% is half. So that's easy. That's going to be 130, half of 260. But for that 5%, well, I know 10% means move the decimal place over one. So 10% is 26, and 5% is half of 10%. So cutting this in half would be 13. So 5% is 13. So now I know 50% was 130. 5% was 13. 130 plus 13 is going to give me 143 as a final answer. So we're looking at D. Hey guys, that's all we're going to cover for today. But remember, you can always click on any of these videos over here to help you keep studying for your next attempt on the ASVAB.